So in today's video, I'm going to do a review of a Left Overture by the band Kansas. This was released on October 21st, 1976, celebrating its 45th anniversary. And I will be honest with you, I'm not really familiar with this band Kansas. Uh, going into this uh, review, I only knew uh, their biggest songs, uh, one of them on this album, uh, Carry On My Wayward Son, and the other one, uh, Dust In The Wind. So listening to this album was uh, new to me. Uh, I knew they were a progressive rock band, and I think with Kansas, the thing that made them stand out was the use of their violin. Their violinist uh, passed away back in July. His name was Robbie Steinhardt. So this band can be compared to a band like Jethro Tull, where like Jethro Tull had their, their flute, and like a band like Styx or Genesis, they had their like keyboards. But this is one of those progressive rock bands that I think is very underrated, and they had their like signature like violin sound to go with those like progressive rock keyboards and all the different instruments. So the band actually also incorporates uh, lots of elements of hard rock. Um, the song Carry On My Wayward Son has been covered by many different bands. Uh, you know, like metal bands such as Anthrax, they covered it. This is their most popular album, their highest selling album, and it was certified five times platinum. The album has eight songs. I'm going to go through all of them, but before I do, let me do a quick cutaway to the obligatory uh, guitar riff, Carry On My Wayward Son. So the album starts off with Carry On My Wayward Son, the most popular song and something I enjoy playing on the guitar, as you could just see in that little clip. It's a hard rocking riff. You know, you don't think of this band as one that influences metal bands, but um, the song has lots of parts. It has the vocal intro, then the hard rock riff, then there's different sections, there's like the violin, there's a the keyboard. So it's a progressive rock song, but it does have a hard rock edge, and that's probably why it was a very popular song. The song has Steve Walsh on guitars, and um, you know, he sings most of the songs with a, with a few exceptions, and he plays the organ and piano. So the second song is called The Wall. The song has a very progressive rock sound to it. It starts with a melodic electric guitar solo, has some uh, prog rock keyboards in the background. The first verse is very soft, and it's just a melodic uh, you know, guitar solo with some uh, prog rock keyboards. You know, the first verse has some acoustic guitars. You know, you hear the violin sound in the song. It's very catchy, it's very melodic, and I also like the bass sound of the song. You do hear it very well. The third song is called What's On My Mind. Uh, this was released as a single, although it didn't really chart very well. The song is a harder rock. It reminds me of either like Deep Purple or a Blue Oyster Cult. Well, it starts out, uh, you know, rocking, but as it gets into the first verse, it's a little more laid back. So the song does go back and forth between like the hard rocking sections and the more melodic verses. And this song does have a really good like bass sound into it. Next song is called Miracles Out of Nowhere. So this is one of the two songs with Robbie Steinhardt on lead vocals. The song starts out with some progressive rock keyboards and their signature uh, violin sound, but like once it reaches the first verse, it almost sounds a little bit like dust in the wind, like with the acoustic guitars, but there is a lot going on in the song. There are so many instruments coming in and out of the song, and that's like just the first minute. As the song progresses, there are lots of different tempo changes with those violin solos. There are isolated keyboard sections. I really like the part at the four minute mark when it's like these church organs and the vocals and it's a really cool change of pace with the song. The song does pick up the pace towards the end with some more like keyboard sections and like a faster rhythm. Track number five is called Opus Insert. This starts out with some progressive rock keyboards but the overall tone of the song is like a 70s arena rock sound. The song still has many of the aspects that kind of like make the band what they are like with that violin sound. There's one part of the song where you hear like this jazzy bass guitar and it's almost like they're playing a xylophone or I think it's actually like a vibraphone or something like that. Track number six is called Questions of My Childhood. The song has a slightly faster pace, but it still has that progressive rock sound with a keyboard intro and the verse section, but it does have more of a, an arena rock sound. The song is not too uh, long, but it does have lots of different violin parts and a very progressive rock sound. Track seven is called Cheyenne Anthem, and this is the other song with Robbie Steinhardt on lead vocals. Now this song has a slow intro with a melodic organ sound, and the first verse is played like with an acoustic guitar. 
And this first verse reminds me a lot of like Neil Young. It has that like that particular sound to it. There are some keyboards in the background that accompanies the acoustic guitar strumming. Second part of the song is just vocals and piano. The song has like a choir or it's like a children's choir followed by a melodic violin solo. Halfway through the song it speeds up and it almost sounds like circus music at this part. But it's a pretty cool tempo change. After about five minutes, you think the song is over, but you do hear that acoustic guitar uh, kind of like start to like, you know, come back into the song. It has that like Neil Young folk sound again. The last song is called Magnum Opus, and this is the final song. This is their epic song. Now, by epic, it's an eight and a half minute song, you know, compared to other bands, you know, like Genesis might do 20 minutes or like Rush would do like 25 minutes, but. It's an eight minute, eight and a half minute song. Lots of different parts. There's like six different sections. I really like the distorted bass sound in the first part. The vocals come in after about two minutes and it is kind of a fairly slow and relaxing song. The song picks up about after three minutes, has some really proggy keyboards and they do speed up the tempos a little bit. You hear some futuristic sounds at one point and there's lots of different like time signature changes as the song goes on. So the song has a very progressive rock sound, also includes the signature like violin sound. There's a part of the song about like five minutes in, kind of sounds like a dream sequence. It's a pretty cool change of pace. As the song reaches the end, it does kind of get, you know, a little like harder. It does have those like hard rock guitars start to come in. But, you know, eight and a half minute song, it's a pretty cool way to end the album. So in conclusion, you know, on this channel, I've done many different progressive rock bands. I've talked about Genesis, Styx, Yes, Jethro Tull, and Rush, and you know, all of those bands do have their own like particular style. But this band, Kansas, they have a very unique sound. It does make them stand out. And I think the one thing that does stand out is the use of like the violins on their songs. And the songs are very interesting. You know, this band is more than uh, Carry On My Wayward Son and Dust in the Wind. There's, there's a lot going on here. There's lots of different sections in the songs. There's lots of different instruments that come in and they come out of the songs, but they maintain a really concise sound. Um, I need to start listening to more of their albums, really. This is a killer album, probably why it's the most popular one. So that is it. This weekend is coming up. I have a poll on my community tab and it looks like I will be reviewing albums by Cradle of Filth, Dream Theater, Elton John, and UDO. But the band I will not be doing is Duran Duran, and I'm glad I put up that poll because otherwise I would have done it and the video probably would have gotten like 20 views. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Check out some of my other Progressive Rock videos. I have linked, uh, put them over there. This is JC Rock and Metal Reviews. Uh, my name is John. Please like, comment, subscribe. I'll be back over the weekend with some new album reviews and I will uh, see you all soon.